Hey guys, it's Jonathan Rose. So what this is, this is a 60 minute video that I presented to everyone going through my Swinging for the Fences options program. And what this program includes, it includes a live class once per month forever. And in this class we teach how to buy options, but this is exactly how I learned how to trade stock options. It's really important. We cover a lot of concepts that all traders should know. Position management, scalping gamma, volatility, finding trades, managing trades. So watch it, enjoy. If you have any questions at all, leave a comment below. I'm happy to answer. Let's get started. See you on the inside. Welcome to our Swinging for the Fences options education. We do this once a month, every single month, just so we can continue talking about some options. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Can you see my screen okay? Awesome, guys. Rob Judge, Victor Wayne, Elaine, David, Bill, cool. Thank you very much. Appreciate the, uh, the sound check. Um, I am recording this. I will send the recording out to everyone after. Phil, thanks. Um, how's everyone doing out there? You guys doing good? Joe, let me just make sure Joe's not trying to get into the room. One sec, one sec. Okay. Um, all right, let's let's get going. So again, this is going to be our monthly options class. Uh, what we'd like to do on these is first, uh, if anybody has any pressing questions that they want to ask right away, we, we could start there or else I'm just going to go pretty much talk about the market right now. It doesn't necessarily, uh, I think that this options class is, has changed a little bit because I don't want to just keep going over the workshop because many of you guys have been on here for over a year. So I'm just going to use this to, to keep exploring, looking for different opportunity. And then if you do have questions about the workshop, we'll obviously cover those as well. But I just don't want you guys to feel like every single month we're just going over the same scans. Um, so that's why. All right. David's asking the status of the MDXG trade. I'll get into MDXG as well. Hey, Ruben. Uh, quick risk disclaimer, guys, because I have to do that. Okay, so trading or investing carries a high level of risks and is not suitable for all persons. Please decide, please, yeah, before deciding to trade or invest, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and ability to tolerate risk. Uh, so whenever we talk about specific trades, guys, it's just my opinion. It's just where I see value in the market. It's not a trade recommendation to any one person. Everyone needs to manage their own trading account. Um, Red is last divided by call. Victor, I don't understand your question. So don't get carried away with the under 50 cents. Use that as a guide, but if something's 40 cents or 60 cents, it's just a guide to be, you know, swinging for the fences, looking for trades that are under 50 cents. Hey, Dennis, what's going on, buddy? Um, I've got a lot of questions on overstock, mostly how did we find overstock? So I know everyone's not a member on here. So if you are a member or if you're not a member, this is what I send out every Sunday, right? I send out game plan for the week. And the massive winner was this uh, overstock number 15. And so I just want to go through how I found that trade because I got a lot of questions about it, and uh, I think you'll find the simplicity kind of crazy. Uh, Overstock shared October 15th. So here's, these were comments that the CEO had on its last earnings call. Uh, if I get to the end of the year and the market doesn't see the value in the stock, 
you're going to see something strategic take place. So he pretty much said if the stock's not going to get off its butt, they're going to do some kind of deal, they're going to do some kind of buyback, because companies will affect the price of their stock, right? They can control it to some degree through buybacks or through deals or, or whatever. So OSTK, 35 puts for a dollar, shared October 15th. You can see what it's done since October 15th, which would be right here is that Monday, you know, just kind of straight up. And the calls that we were buying for a dollar are now worth $12. So what I suggested if whoever was in this is you might want to sell the 45s or sell the 55s. What I like to do on these type of trades, guys, when a stock's moving like that, and if you bought the call for a dollar, I'd want to try to find some upside calls to sell for a dollar. So if you were in this trade now and you're looking to hedge it, instead of selling stock because they have earnings, you could always sell something way up here. How I found this trade was this article. The Grants Conference is a very big conference that was going on. One of the speakers, Mark Codes, is a like a very very well-known short seller. He's like in like the Dave Einhorn camp. Well, Mark Codes was always extremely bearish overstock. Overstock actually sued his hedge fund, asking for seven hundred and fifty million dollars in damages, which they eventually settled. But at the Grand's conference. Mark Cohoes was presenting and came out being very, very bullish over stock. So once I heard that, then I started reading about it. I came across the uh, CEO's comments as well. That was it. That was the only reason why it ended up on the spreadsheet. And you know, obviously, it, it, it worked out really well and really quickly. But that was it. Just kind of my head was up, looking around, being creative and you want to react fast. So this came out October 10th. I shared it October 15th. That's where I got that overstock trade. Um, Tom is saying you must read for hours and hours every week to find these trades. So, so Tom, that's, that's what I, yeah, I do. I do, but you know, it's my, my, my kid plays baseball and he practices for hours and hours a week because he plays baseball, that's what he does. For me, I, I do this for a living, right? So, and the difference in my style, guys, and I honestly, uh, I don't want to make enemies here, but I think trade, trading rooms are a bunch of BS. I just do. So if I'm doing research on a name like Overstock and I buy these puts, my work's done. What am I going to do? There's nothing, there, there's no management. The work was reading and searching and finding the reason for the trade. And I love to do that. That's, you know, as far as my hobbies, that's, that's something I really, really enjoy doing. It's also my livelihood. So if people are sitting in trading rooms all, all day, you know, just staring at Mr. Guru, buying futures and selling futures or, or something like that, I just think it's BS. I think it's a hustle. I think that if you really want to I don't know. I mean, just succeed in this for the long term. You have to find plays that you believe in. And so that's something you'll see. And for each one of the week ahead plays, which I share every single week, every one of these is researched or has a story similar to OSTK. Right? It's not going to be the exact story, but every trade that we do, you need to have a story behind it. So um, back to your statement, Tom, I must read for hours and hours every week. Well, that's kind of how I set up Active Day Trader because I know that you guys have real jobs. And so I also know this is what it takes for, for me to be successful in the market. So I set up Active Day Trader in a way that I'll do all the work for you. I'll share everything I'm doing, but you need to learn how to, how to manage your trades. That's going to be the most important thing. And obviously, they're not all winners. But it's just risk versus reward, putting ourselves in the highest probability to succeed. Okay, 
So that's how I got that trade. I just got a bunch of questions coming in, so let me just read through them. Um, okay, so Victor, your questions regarding the options tree. I'm making a note. We'll go over the options tree right now. I mean, uh, later on. I want to stay, though, on this topic. Uh, show. Sure. Sam's just asking how you make a straddle. Here's overstock, spread, straddle, 46. This is the straddle market. It's just buy, if you're buying, you're going to be long calls and long puts. If you're selling, you're going to be short calls and short puts. You can also do it individually, 46. If you buy these for $5 and buy these for $4.10, you're in a straddle for $9.10. Uh, Johnny, buying calls, buying calls in Overstock. We're buying calls for a dollar. Hey, Ted. So, Ted. So, Ted, are, I guess you're not a member, so, but... Uh, that's how the membership works. I'll put a link for those who aren't members. Uh, I'll put the trial link. It's activedaytrader.com forward slash trial. And then every single Sunday I share the week ahead, which is this. And then every Monday I do the same thing in futures. But you do need to learn for sure. Um, Dennis. Uh, do most of my ideas come from Barron's? No, I, so I read, I read Barron's every weekend. I read Financial Times. I read Investor's Business Daily. Those are probably my three favorite. And then uh, a lot of ideas will come. So that Overstock, for example, that Barron's article was how it was was kind of like the genesis of the idea, the foundation of the idea. But then what I do is I'll go, I'll show you here. So I'll go to Twitter. I'm not a big, I'm just not a big Twitter guy. Uh, I just find it to be more of a pain in the ass. Excuse my language. I find it more to be a pain in the butt. But if I'm following MDXG, which is one of my stocks, I'll follow who's, who's following it and the stories. MDXG actually came from Overstock. I started following Overstock to learn about that story. Mark Kohoutz is the short seller. And now that's how I found about MDXG. That's, that's a lot of the ways where I research. You know, something will take me to, to somewhere else and I'll just start reading it and I'll go on a trail. But, you know, for me, the, the juice is worth the squeeze. The, the, the time spent to find these trades gives me the confidence once I'm in those trades. So that's why uh, it's really important to me to do that. I would never do a trade just based upon um, technical analysis. I would never do a trade if someone just said, um, like JD I was just looking at, and I'll get into JD a little bit too. And if I put uh, just basic moving averages on JD, apply OK, you'll notice that JD is getting right to its 200 period moving average. So interesting. I really don't want to do a trade just based upon that. But then the other reason to, to consider a trade in this is its relationship with Alibaba. Alibaba just came out with really good earnings. JD controls 18% of the online retail market in China. Very, very correlated stocks. BABA rallying. So JD, not only is it by that 200 period moving average, I also know that it's very inexpensive relative to BABA. So there's a couple of different reasons to get into the trade. Back to my questions. Um, Teo, I didn't. That's a great question. Uh, Teo says you must have corroborated that article on Overstock 
with some other technical tool or something. No, I didn't. I know the story. I know that that guy's a major short seller. I knew just from being in the business for a while that Overstock sued Cohoes' hedge fund. So all of a sudden, him coming out on a very public platform and pretty much selling the long thesis for Overstock. And then once I read into the filings and looked at the valuation, which I'll always do, I always check financials. Company's got to be make, making some money. Then I get into a trade. But I don't, I mean, charting, guys, you got to understand it's so freaking subjective. It really is. So it's like, you know, if we're just looking at a stock, you know, JD, I can sit here with you guys and I promise I can make a negative argument and a bullish argument, right? I mean, you could start thinking that, hey, maybe this is a little, you know, left shoulder in, and, and, right, and head and the right shoulder and it's going to start going down. I don't, I don't believe that, but I'm just saying anybody can, can sit there and make up a reason. It's subjective. It doesn't mean anything. Someone said that it should work, so therefore people think it should work. I mean, technically, this looks really bearish, I guess, but BABA is rallying like crazy, and JD is second in the online retail space in China, and they're growing 25% faster than BABA. So I like those reasons better for a trade than, you know, someone told me that this price behavior, this price action is bearish. That's, you know, mm. Ted, excellent. So Ted says, would the tax plan be an event that could be used in the swing for the fence strategy? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. But then you have to dig in, Ted, like the tax plan could be used for a swing for the fence strategy. What companies are going to be affected most directly by the tax plan? And that's when you'd start having to really you know, start doing some research and read into it. Thanks. Would the, the tax plan affect BABA in a bad way? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to look at that. I don't know. Uh, Arthur, how do you get out of a long straddle? Good question. So let's say that we did a straddle in JD as an example. And let's do a straddle at 38. Now, the way to do so the way to, to look at this would be if we did a straddle and we bought one. We bought one call and we bought one put. So so Tad, I don't know what would be affected in the tax plan. You'd have to look you'd have to research. I don't know. I don't know any more than I just said that yes, that's a good idea, but you'd have to do some work and, and figure it out. Or if or if that was something that I was interested in. I would have to do some work and, and figure it out. But I don't know. So who's yeah, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. Um so Art, back back to you, sorry. So Art, let's say you have one strap. You're long a 38 strike put and you're long a 38 strike call. I don't even know if there is a 38 strike, but for the example, the way to look at that is you're long 100 shares from 38 and you're short 100 shares from 38. That's it. If the stock rallies to 44 and you want to get out, just sell 100 shares. Then you're going to be long from 38 100 times, short from 44 100 times, and 
you have the option to be short from 38, but you're not going to exercise that option. Why is MDXG rallying? Little bugger. Um, Art, straddle at or before or after earnings. Art, I don't understand that question. If you want to get out of the straddle before earnings, is that what you're asking? So if you wanted to get out of the straddle before earnings, or is, is there a specific stock that you want to look at? Would that be helpful? Okay, which one? Oh, okay. So let's just use let's just use JD. If it gets to 44 before earnings, just sell 100 shares. You're flat. If you're long 100, sell 100, you're flat. That's what I would do. Uh, Aaron. Okay. Sedge. Why does Sedge have different strikes than listed on the left side? Um, um, two, two, two. Aaron, I don't understand. Why does Sedge, Sedge have different strikes than that listed on the left side? Help me out. What am I, what am I missing here? Here's another trade, Sedge is an earnings trade we shared October 8th, 29's for $1.90, 29's are four bucks now. Oh, Aaron, you're referencing my email? Uh, I would probably say that Jonathan made a mistake. That would be the only, I'm just emailing someone to get in the room, sorry about that. That's the only thing I, that I could think of, Aaron, I probably made a mistake. When, when in doubt, if, you're, uh, if, if, if Jonathan's email or video and the market disagree, you could always default to the market on that one. <laughs> I'll give the market the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, oh, yep, keep the optionality, I like that. Okay, I got through all the questions on this topic. That was that overstock trade. Um, I do really like, this is not really a swinging for the fences trade, but I really like this long stock in JD, especially against BABA. If you wanna sell some upside calls in BABA, I think that trade makes a ton of sense. So right now with the swinging for the fences trades, guys, it's a little tricky because there's earnings, right? So just because there's a lot of volatility in the stock, it may be because of earnings. Uh, Dennis, you're talking about for the BABA, JD BABA trade. My favorite way to do this trade would be selling upside calls in BABA. Now, like if you were getting in now, I know this is, was on the uh, week ahead in November, but if you're getting in now, I'd want more time. So if you're considering getting in now, I might look to, you know, sell these two tens or something like that while being long JD. Oh, doing two different debit spreads against one another? Sure, you can do that. I usually like legging into, de into debit spreads. 
Yeah, I mean, that, all, all you're doing is a butterfly, Dennis, right? Yeah, you're doing, so, so what that trade is, is you're doing a butterfly. You're, you're buying a strangle. Let's go to a cheaper stock. So if we use Microsoft and you wanted to do something like that, you could buy the 82 halves and then, you know, sell 90s and sell 70s. You're just putting yourself into a butterfly. You can do the same thing with a strangle instead of a straddle. I think that is, is that what people call an iron condor? I'm not too good at the names. I just I just trade the options, and if my position looks like one of those spreads, fine. But I, I just I don't look at the market like that. Okay, so that's just the opposite. Okay. So what that is, so so you guys call it iron condor. What I was just talking about, I was just calling it a butterfly. So if you sell a straddle and buy the wings, I look at that as you're just selling a butterfly. If you do the opposite, you're buying a butterfly. Right. David, I, I'm saying the same thing. Yeah, saying the same thing. I just, I don't like all the names. I think they're all marketing BS. I want to keep it simple. What else we got? Um, so right now, looking for swinging for the fences trades, it's going to be key to find stuff that's really, really moving. Uh, so if you have been long Microsoft stock, you can still buy uh, Goju, uh, Gojun. I'm not, I'm not sure what you're looking to accomplish with that. The question is, if you're long Microsoft stock, you can still buy the 8290 call spread. You you can. I was just using that Microsoft as a little example. Um, I don't know what you're looking to accomplish by doing that, though. Do you no longer want to be long Microsoft? Are you looking to hedge Microsoft? Are you looking to 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 lock in some profit? If you're long the stock and you're looking to hedge. I would only sell calls. I wouldn't buy calls. And that'll put you into a covered call. Keep it simple. Covered call, easy. So my favorite trades right now, using like a swing it for the fences strategy, is combining some of the earnings plays that we have. So like WTW is a very, very volatile name post earnings. You can see how it's moved lately. WTW has earnings coming up. Let me find the exact earnings dates. I think it's November. November 6th, maybe. Yeah, November 6th after the close. WTW has earnings. So when I see a, a name like this, and look how you, know, you go back to 2015, it's a really, really volatile stock, right? I mean, just by looking at it, very, very volatile stock. It's also a name that moves a ton post earnings. If I look at its previous earnings moves, last earnings, the day after it moved 27%, before that it moved 19%, it moved 38%. So we could expect a lot of movement from WTW post earnings. I'll get into that in a second. 
So WTW, I think this thing's really going to move. Whether it goes up or down, I have no idea. But if you're looking for a swinging for the fence type trade, it did the opposite before earnings. Ted, I, I, that, that, I'm not sure the relevance. Just because it did the opposite before, you know? So if you look at a, this is what I do. So look at WTW and think of a 20% move. A 20% move is gonna be $10, right? So if we go here and we do $10 above and $10 below, If we want to speculate that WTW has a high probability of moving outside of these two lines, then we'd go to the options and see if we can get good value. WTW, if you want to buy the 55 calls, it's 70 cents. If you're bearish and you want to buy the 35 puts, it's 80 cents. To me, that's very, very expensive. If I bought a 10 lot, it's $800 for a binary bet. I need the stock to move 20%. I don't like that. That just seems way too expensive. Now, if these were like 20 cents, that's a different story. But right here, it's, it's too expensive. So even though I think WTW is going to move a ton post-earnings, it doesn't pass the sniff test as far as do I want to bet $800 on a 10 lot that this thing, you know, trades under 34. Probably not. So WTW is something I would move on. Another name coming up that I like that moves a lot is Swer. Oh, uh, they're, they're actually after today. For my gamblers out there, this is a fun one to gamble on. <laughs> I'm a gambler too, so. Go look at the. Like this is a lot more realistic. The, the strangle 25s and, and 20s. Or for you technicians out there, you can pick a side. Right? This is a fun trade. Anybody wants, to, you know, nice risk reward. You can lose principal though if you're wrong. 15 days, kind of a fun trade. You can start to see too how stocks behave. So if you, if you look at a name like Swer, it gaps, it, it waits for these earnings and then it moves, right? And it's kind of proven that in, in its past. So same thing, now we have earnings and it's been in a really like exceptionally tight range, which always to me is like a coil up that it's gonna break out. If I look at SWER and how it's moved post earnings in the past, Sucker moves. Price moves within one day of its last earnings. The last time it moved 22%, then 19%, 35%, 16, 22, 30. So if we think about a 20% move in SWER, 22.65, 20% move would be, what, $5, $5 lower would be 17 right? Look at the price of 25 we can get for 60 cents, 65 cents. That's a good deal better than, than WTW. Much rather do Swer rather than WTW, I think they move both about the same post earnings.
Good question. Dennis is saying, would you go out to December for a swirl? And the answer is no, but why wouldn't I go out to December? And Dennis, you're probably going to answer your own question. Why don't we want to go out to December? Because earnings are now, right? So if we want to play based upon an earnings ex expected move, and we like the value, we don't mind paying for 15 days, but why would we want to pay for those extra 28 days? 43 minus 15, 28. We're paying for an extra, all that extra time. We don't, we don't need to do that. No, right, Dennis, you get the, that extra time. I agree with that. But what's the reason that it would move? Stocks usually move for a reason. They don't just move because it's Tuesday, right? That's something, right, that's something that it took me a very long time to realize. And it's something that's kind of basic, but stocks don't move just because it's Thursday or Friday or whatever. They move when there's a reason. So whenever we see a big move, you could always go look up, and you should, why is it moving? There's, always, there, there's usually a reason. Okay? Right. Usually you need a catalyst, guys. But I do like these swirl. Fun trade, 25 calls, 20 puts. I like trades like this, too. Chem, down 30% today. When stocks move like this, I'm a big believer that who the heck knows where to value them. Stock was trading at 25, drops down to 17 after they had garbage earnings. But as a market maker, I promise you, nobody knows where to value this. They're just trying their best to, for it to find a home. So because of that, I like to go look at the options and see are there cheap plays around there. 17, 17 last. Volatility is still very expensive. Fun little trades, though, because who knows? I doubt it's going to trade down 30%, right? Say the company's worth a billion dollars. It's up 30%. Now it's worth $700 million. Is it just going to stop there? Or are they going to try to find some supply and demand, a balance? for it to start trading. Before I move on, uh, does that make sense to everybody? This is my thinking. It, it is just, just my thinking. It just got hit by 30%. It's not going to just stop and be like, okay, we valued it perfectly, we're done. They got to figure it out. And there's no 30% move really. Here, I guess, it dropped big time, stayed down, and then popped right back up. But it's not going to just stay and, and just be 17, 15 for the next two months. Yeah, for Kim. Yeah. Time frame, you know, 10 days, I think it'll take before it settles in. Good place to find stocks like this. Uh, I don't use stock twits at all, except I, I like this trending thing up top. I just think stock twits is like poor man's Twitter where everyone's trying to tell everybody else how smart they are. But I do like always checking out what's up here because those stocks are always in play. This is where I came across Cam. Like all these, this has to be, I'm sure this is earnings. Um, Teo, good point. Teo is saying, back to the conversation about Swerp, 
And this is what Dennis was saying too, so uh, you know, just to clarify, maybe you'd want to go out for to December if the stock had a really high beta. If the stock naturally liked to move a ton between earnings like X, like steel. That's a perfect way to segue into steel. Um, if you play with Kim, will you buy a straddle? Um, so, uh, Gojun, I like the trades that I like are on here. I'm going through examples right now of things that I look at, but the trades that I like that are researched are on here. Okay, so so just so you guys members know, when I just go through this and look real fast. I'm just trying to show you what I look for, how I look for them. For Kim, I would only play, you know, like like little trades. 20s, you know, buying a 5 lot, buying a 10 lot. You know, just a little play if I'm thinking that we're going to have some volatility, but if I'm really going to risk money and build a position, I go to the spreadsheet. Uh, any insight on LC? And then Dennis, I'll check out that infin. Uh, LC. Lending Club. When is Lending Club's earnings? And then Al's also saying there's lots of call buying on the six strike. Al, are you sure that's call buying? November 7th earnings. November 7th. Okay, so Al, are you saying this open interest was call buying or are you saying this 170 is call buying? Okay. There you go, Al. Good. So you got to be very, very careful assuming that options trades are one way or another, okay? I can buy a million calls and be very, very bearish of stock. How can I buy a million calls and be bearish? If I buy a million of these for 25 cents, how can I be bearish? Excellent, James. Excellent, Aaron. Excellent, Al. Nope. Shorting stock. If I buy calls and sell stock, I am buying a put. So what institutions do in order to mask their trade so everyone doesn't follow them is sometimes they'll buy a whole bunch of calls and if they simultaneously sell the underlying stock they're buying a put so if you buy a call and sell stock you're buying a put those are your synthetics if you're buying a put and you buy stock you're buying a call so that's going to be a little more advanced for many people but the major takeaway is don't just look at options activity and assume that you know what it is without really analyzing it. So somebody just bought 200, 200 something, right? 200 calls. So if we go down to options, time, and sales on Thinkorswim, whatever platform you're using has this. Anna, and I'll show you how you could decipher what it is. December 6 puts a hundred traded. 
They traded at 9.03. They traded 63.54% volatility. So the first thing we can do is just go look at 9.03. Nine oh three is going to be right here. So when these people, whoever did it, bought a hundred puts at nine oh three, do you think they bought stock as well, or do you think they just did puts? Just it puts, right? Because if they bought stock, they would have pushed the stock up here. Because they would have needed to buy lots of stock. Cool, right? So they definitively bought puts. As a market maker on the Chicago Board of Options Exchange, that is the only indicator we would use to value options following unusual options activity. Al, what stock are you talking about? Are you talking about LC? So if you have calls, okay. So Al, please don't, I'm not picking on you at all, by the way. I'm just, I appreciate you, uh, you participating. So Al says that he's got calls in Lending Club. And he says, but then decide if he changes his opinion, oh, because of what I said, is it wise to buy puts to create a strangle? Well, how I trade, what I do, and it's really kind of a foundation of my approach because it's so important to trade confidently. Once I get into a trade, it's kind of done. Like, so I'm not going to really change my opinion. Um, I'll, I'd strongly suggest that you don't trade your opinion because somebody bought 100 puts. That's a $6,000 trade. That could be any buffoon in the world. It's not a big trade at all. Um, Let me look to see what I think of the valuation of LC going into earnings. So another thing that I would do if I was considering trading LC Lending Club, I would look at the performance of the other comparable companies in that space. You know, what are they, micro lending or, or, or short term lending? I would go look at the other companies in that space and see how they performed post earnings or to see how they were priced going into earnings. So there's a lot to learn. It's not easy, right? It's more conservative to buy puts as well. Al. Okay, uh, Gujon says if you have a call in a stock and the stock is in an uptrend, how do you decide when to short the stock? What does an uptrend mean? See, that's the problem, right? It's, it's someone's interpretation. No, I don't, I don't agree with don't short. I just don't know what an uptrend is. Are S&Ps, are we trending higher? Probably, right? I, I mean, shorter term, I, I don't, so that's the problem, right? Stock, okay, so stock price goes higher, higher highs and higher lows. But in what, right, but in what time frame? I mean, that's like, that's kid stuff, guys. That's, that's trading room, higher highs, higher lows, watch the price action for a breakout. I mean, I could explain that to my 11-year-old in about four seconds and he would understand it perfectly.
okay? Overstock. If you're long the 35 calls, at what point do you hedge? Is that a fair question? Right? Say you're long stock from 35, at what point do you hedge? That I can answer. But it's in an uptrend, at what time do we, do we, do we sell stock? I, I don't, your definition of an uptrend and my definition of an uptrend are, are, are two totally different things. Overstock, what I wanna do is if I buy those calls for a dollar, 35s, or let's talk about right now, and I wouldn't initiate a position right now because the trade's gone, but if I bought these 50s for $2 or $2.50, what I wanna do is the moment, especially going into earnings, if I can sell 250 and have a call spread on for zero, Sign me up. I want to do that all day, every single day. How many call spreads would you buy if you could buy it for zero? If we could buy the 50, 60 call spread, buying 50s for 250 and selling 60s for 250, how many times would you want to do that trade? If buying power wasn't a real thing. If a genie came down and said, okay, I'm going to give you that spread for zero. Buy 50, sell 60 for zero. I'd want to do it a trillion times because our risk is zero. The most that we can make is the difference between the two strikes. Yeah, I mean, if you'd want to do it. So, so I look to hedge my position. I don't care about the market. So I don't care that it's uptrending or downtrending. So how about this as an example? Let's say, let's say a stock is going down, but your calls are going higher. What then? That doesn't have anything to do with a stock trending. You guys need to understand that when you're trading options, you're not, it's, it's, the trend is not what you're concerned with. That's right, Ted. The volatility is what you're concerned with. Is the volatility going higher? Someone asked earlier, and I missed that question, MDXG, it's rallying, but why aren't the options getting cheaper? Because it's rallying and Everyone's calling BS, okay? These were 15 cents at 20 cents when the stock was trading 1180. The stock rallied 30 cents and these didn't move because volatility is staying bid. Volatility is expensive. You need to start thinking more about how volatility is priced into the stock rather than how direction affects the stock. Does that make sense, guys? How do we do that? Tad, good, good question. <laughs> I need a lot more classes to teach you. And that's what I teach, guys. I mean, a lot of you guys have been with me for, for a long time, but I'm gonna be pretty straightforward when it comes to this stuff. It's very, very important. Okay, and that's also why we do these classes once every month. I know there's a lot of people out there and everyone's claiming to be an expert. Everybody wants to teach you, but let's sift through the garbage. It's too freaking expensive, right? These tens, MDXG, if you can buy them for 40 cents and sell these seven and a half for 20 cents, that doesn't stink. Put this on for 20 cents, $10, that's $200. If you're right, you can make 2,300. Tad, we do weekly in the Apex. So the Apex members, guys, come to these classes, they come to this class, and then tomorrow we, we have an Apex class. The Apex members 
get these classes once, twice, sometimes three times a week. MDXG, I am not changing my opinion because it's rallying. I am obnoxiously bearish on MDXG. My biggest concern is time. I'm afraid we're, we might run out of time, but I still hate this stock. Bearish, 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 bearish. See, and now we get, I mean, again, technical analysis, guys, I can make an argument for either side on any stock. 200 period moving average right down here. These are gonna be all weekly lows that they're getting down to. I think this thing is gonna go lower, lower, lower. So MDXG is moving up and down and the options aren't moving very much because volatility is not going anywhere. There's a volatility bid underneath MDXG. Why don't you go out further on MDXG? You could, but the further you go out, the more expensive it's going to be. You got to make that, that decision, right? If MDXG gets investigated by the SEC today, and I buy these, you know, for 40 cents or 45 cents, that's $450. If I came out here, it would cost me $1,000. It would cost me twice as much. It's a timing thing. Greg, my pleasure, man. Thank you. Yeah, you want to jump in there. You just don't want to pay for more time than you need. Hard, I like it. Got a little momentum yesterday. I thought we were going to get a little follow through. Unfortunately, we didn't, but this thing can, can gap at any time. Any time. Beginning of the year, it's a $7 stock. It's going to, it's, it's, it's going to trade down there, I think. My opinion. I have to keep saying that. Okay? That's what I got for you guys, a little bit different. Do you like this, uh, do you like the format? I just don't want for you guys to feel like it's just a swing for the fences, you know, go over the workshop every time. I think it'll get real sour for people who've been with me for a while. So I thought it'd be better just to kind of dance around the positions right now. Cool. Uh, yes, I will send out this video, absolutely. If you are not a member, Hang out with me. It's $7 to test it out. You get this every Sunday. Hopefully you can see the work that goes into, uh, into these opinions. This is what I do full time. Okay? I do this for my selfish benefit, and then I share it with you. Tio, fantastic. Um, I'm going to upload this now. I'll send it out. Probably should get in a few hours, okay? Thanks, guys. Julie from London. <laughs> Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks again.